Our guest today, Janet Devlin, hit our screens back in 2011 when she won over the X Factor judges and millions of viewers. Now, it's not her incredible voice that we're talking about today, though. After finding fame aged just 20, uh, Janet had to seek help for alcoholism, and she's here now to share her journey to sobriety and getting her life back on track. So welcome, Janet. Hiya. Oh, Hi, hello. Lovely to see you. Does that feel like a lifetime ago, thinking about that audition way back when? Oh, my God, yeah. It's, <laughs> it's been almost 10 years, so I feel really old when I watch it. <laughs> How old were you at the time? I was 16. Ooh, wow. I was say, you do look very young, and I can <laughs> sort of see in your eyes, it's a very accomplished performance, but actually looking now, I can see that you look quite shy and I, I don't even Sad. know how you managed to do that at 16. <laughs> so, yeah, I was petrified. <laughs> so obviously you, you did really, really well in X Factor. I mean, to overcome the nerves in the, in the first place, and obviously Brenda knows all about that, you ended up, you, you finished fifth, and then you, you, you ended up in the north of England pretty much on your own working on a record, which is any young girl's dream. But as someone who has is shy, is maybe feeling a little bit introverted, alcohol was something that you turned to just to give you that little bit of a social crutch. Yeah, so I moved to Sheffield on my own and I was 17. And in those days, life was so hectic and it was amazing, but also, you know, at the end of the day, when you get home, you're in your apartment on your own in a different country where you know nobody. Um, so it was definitely very isolating. And when I was in social situations, then I did turn to alcohol to give me a bit of a confidence boost. Mm. So at what point do you, looking back now, feel that you started to have a problem? Um, I would definitely say by 18, I had a, I had a definite problem. And what, what was it that led you to that conclusion? Oh, God. Um, maybe the failed suicide attempts. <gasps> oh, my <laughs> goodness me. Oh, gosh. So yeah. it, it went much deeper and much darker than having a couple of drinks to take the edge off, like many, many people watching will appreciate. Anybody who goes into social circumstances mm -hmm. knows that, you know, having a, a, a little drink is a socially accepted way of doing that. How did you go from so-called normal drinking, and Denise will back me on this, drinking is the only drug that you have to apologise for not using when you're out in, in public, <laughs> to, to feeling in such a dark place? Um, I don't know in particular the exact moment when it got really dark, but I pretty much just woke up one day with a bottle of gin under my pillow every day. Before, do, like, before going to work, I'd have to get drunk at night, I'd have to get drunk. I don't, I, it just, it really quickly went very downhill for me. Yeah. Janet, when you, had you had issues with, sorry? Sorry, I was gonna say, when you had, talk about failed suicide attempts before we move on from that, cause you, you just sort of very casually mentioned that. <laughs> did your family know about that? How, I mean, how did that manifest itself? No, so my family didn't know at the time. And to be honest, most of them were never planned. Do you know, it would happen whenever I'd had too much to drink and access to sleeping medication that I would like mix the two together. Right. Mm. Mm. As that someone, is, Janet, who... mom. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, my um, poor mom as... like was always just waiting on that phone call to find out when I finally was gone. I bless her soul. Like I, I love her to pieces and I'm just, so glad every day that I'm not causing her the same pain and I, well, as I was back in those the days. Great thing about, that's the great thing about sobriety, that it gives you back to the people who, who love you. But I've spoken, as an alcoholic, recovering alcoholic myself, Janet, I've spoken to a lot of young people who found themselves in a similar situation to you. And they said, a bit like the quote that, that Andrea just mentioned there, did you find a pressure from your, uh, other young people and also from advertising? Because I spoke to a lot of young people and they said, a lot of advertising of alcohol and a lot of programs that um, celebrate young people getting very drunk really plays into the hands of young people and they feel a pressure to drink and be part of that. Whereas maybe when you're older, some people might think it's easier to say no. Did you find that as well, living a, as a young, beautiful pop star as well? You were expected to be a bit crazy. No, because... Um... My, uh, people knew my audition, so people expected me to be very shy. 
Um, so I had like a green card to be a shy person. It was just this um, incessant voice in my head that led me to drinking so much because I'd, I'd be in a social situation and, and that voice in my head that would be like, oh, they don't even like you. You need to go home. Like they're just doing this out of pity. And just the only thing that would take that insidious voice out of my head was alcohol. Was the alcohol. Mm. Janet, yeah. what did you do to help yourself get sober? So <laughs> it wasn't really my choice. I tried loads of times to get sober and nothing was really working. But uh, my mum flew over um, to help me out one, one time because I'd, I'd gone missing for three days again. And she came over and walked me to the doctor's office, walked me to this clinic that they try and get people sober. Um, and they had no slots left. So somebody slipped me a card for AA. Um, and then that's when I, I went. And in my first meeting, I just, it just changed my life. It was like the first day of the rest of my life, really. Do you know, it's so Fantastic. wonderful just to see you looking fresh-faced, looking so well, <laughs> sounding so enthusiastic. And your new concept album, Confessional, and your autobiography, My Confessional, is uh, released on the 5th of June, 2020. Do you know, best and best of luck to you, lovely girl. <laughs> I really, really wish you wish you <laughs> all the best. Well done for overcoming it. it it's not a tricky road, and uh, it's one that you're going to have to continue to work on, and we wish <laughs> you all the luck with that. Thank you.